8 o'clock, it was a critical day in court for lawyers defending the so-called zombie hunter. Brian Patrick Miller is accused of killing two young women in the 90s, dubbed the Phoenix Canal Murders. He was well known in the Valley's cosplay and horror communities, and the crimes he's accused of are truly horrific. The focus today was on Miller's mental and psychological state. Today's testimony is so important because it could make or break his insanity plea if he goes to prison or is put to death. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney working this trial. And why was this specific testimony so important? Well, because his defense team is trying to prove that Brian Patrick Miller is not guilty by reason of insanity. His DNA was found on the girls, so rather than try to argue that he didn't do it, his team is going for why he was insane at the time and didn't know what he was doing was wrong. Today's testimony was all about a condition doctors say he had called dissociative amnesia. A glimpse into the psyche of the zombie hunter, as told by clinical psychologist Dr. Bethany Brand, who had several conversations and sessions with Brian Patrick Miller. She recalled an unusual way he described his mind and the noise inside of it. He feels like there are different TVs playing in his head. Dr. Brand says Miller suffered from dissociative amnesia, a condition characterized by memory gaps or loss, especially from a traumatic event or time. Miller is accused of brutally stabbing and killing Angela Brasso and Melanie Burness in 1992 and 1993. Both were riding their bikes in Phoenix along the Arizona Canal at the times they were killed. His defense attorneys argue his autism disorder and dissociative amnesia made him insane at the time of the crimes. Therefore, he didn't know that killing these girls was wrong. The state specifically asked you, is it your opinion that someone with dissociative amnesia could cause someone to commit a murder. Do you recall that question? Yes. What was your answer? Something like it could be um, related but not causal. There could be a part of them, a self-state, that has very violent, revengeful feelings, fantasies, and wishes, and another part not know about that. Um, and so in that case, it could contribute. But in other cases, there's plenty of dissociative amnestic patients out there that don't commit murders. Dr. Brand kept notes of what Miller told her that focused on a pattern of avoidance. She said Miller desperately did not want to have a dissociative disorder and says he didn't seem aware of his symptoms. He just became very frustrated every time I kept pushing and, and pointing out things like your semen was found on these women. You know, he became incredibly frustrated with me pushing this. Um, he didn't become hostile, he didn't become irate, but he was very frustrated. He also never confessed to the murders to Dr. Brand. I think the most important thing is he doesn't remember these murders. To not remember doing something so egregious as murders, that's incredibly dysfunctional. Because it's a bench trial with no jury, all of this will fall solely on the judge to decide whether his condition is enough to rule not guilty by reason of insanity. And if that's the case, he could avoid prison altogether once the trial ends. And that's the thing here. The possibilities in this trial range from being put in a mental facility to life in prison to even sentenced to death. We now expect this trial to go well into February, if not into March, before we get a verdict. So, guys, it's a long road yeah. ahead here. So this is a bench trial. Is this part of the reason why we haven't heard many updates on what's going on? Basically, right. Yeah. There's no jury. So, And there were only a handful of days that really happened in court um, over the holidays. And at that time, there was some important testimony from Brian Patrick Miller's former mentor after he got out of juvenile hall for a stabbing and from Miller's former girlfriend. Both were very telling and important to the case. So we just released a brand new episode on the True Crime Arizona podcast de detailing that testimony, getting everybody up to speed on where exactly the trial stands now. And you can download and listen to the episode now wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. A lot of information, yeah. new information so here. Yes, Brianna. And nobody's covered it like the True Crime team. So thanks for that, Brianna. All right, we turn